let's go further here. Here is what scripture says. This has been coasting. I told all my prophets and my people, we're going to coast right through this. Compared to uh, how it used to be, this is coasting, beloveds. <clears throat> Jesus replied, are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Now about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses in the account of the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. So <clears throat> when you have a third of the entire earth spiritually dead, beloveds, your ministry opportunities aren't opportunities. So when you have one Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, well, what language is spoken in heaven? We'll start there. People will say to me, is this all you do, Lord? You just Everything revolves around God and Jesus all the time. What do you think heaven is like? What does the scripture say about heaven? I had for a long time come to the conclusion, no one's gonna wanna live with me. All I do, Jesus this, Jesus that. I'm always learning or growing or seeing something the Holy Spirit is. And then I met my wife. And I witnessed the purity in my wife, the things that she likes, her entire thought process on things. Then I looked at the city she was in and their thought process and the things that I was hearing when I sat down in uh, very, very few situations, ambushed a few people. Me and my wife were at a park once and we ambushed some people, one person actually. There weren't opportunities there. That's why I wasn't ministering out there too much. But I also, um, was trying to, uh, really appreciate her and help her. And the Holy Spirit used it as a training ground for us and all of these wounds that she had that she didn't really take the time to address and where they started. The lack of love that she was shown by her earthly dad, the lack of what real love actually is and how we stepped into her life to replace that. So I had decided a long time ago, I'm too old for everyone. That was my, my thought process. And then I was like, well, I'm going to need a personality. And it turns out I've always had the same personality. So <clears throat> using the things of God and then mixing that with, yeah, but I'm also in this. I'm also in this. I'm also in this. took my ministry to a very um,
debated and not seen as of God from, and this is from God, type of response that I've always received from most lukewarm Christians. So I just stopped really bothering with it. My wife is more than a Christian. My wife loves God and she fears God. And those are the two most important ingredients you have to have before you can even approach heaven. Otherwise, you just get a taste of it, but you couldn't dwell there. So a lot of um, the times I have sat down with demons, like in San Diego, when I was sleeping on the pavement, a woman walked up. Hey, you want a drink? Yeah. I got tequila and two glasses. And then we sat at a table, the pitch black night. I was um, finished with my work at that time at Peter's house. And then she proceeded to tell me all kinds of stories of things that she had done, because <clears throat> that was my first foray into hell. And my wife had read this book uh, that Bill Weiss won. Well, she had perused it. About 23 minutes in hell. And she had asked, let me see hell. We told her, you wouldn't last five minutes in hell, babe. No. So we gave her the Sheol version. <clears throat> and then kept pulling her out of it. Like, what have you learned? Like, are you okay? That type of thing. Because it's real. So, listening to my wife's prayers, this is how I'm answering them, babe. I love you more than you know.